Gotcha. And hello, everybody. It is Tom Chenault, and it's the Network Marketing Leadership Show. And I've got my little miniature co-host with me. Looks just like me. Mini me. Mini me. <laughs> this is Adrian Chenault. How are we doing, Adrian? Could not be better. Have you ever been so more excited, excited in your life? I truly have not. This is the culmination of my career. I am going to tell you guys, this is it. And you're going to be blown away by our guest today. Harvey McKay is the man. I love this guy with all of my heart. I have wanted to meet him. I've wanted him on this show forever. And I finally got a little crack in the door at Eric Warre's house a few weeks ago. And the rest is history. Harvey McKay, how are you, man? Well, I am so happy to spend an hour with you and Adrian. I mean, last night, so happy. You know, I felt like I'd sleep like a baby, which I did. I cried all night. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, I've never met anybody with work habits like you. What time do you work out at, work out at night? Well, it's not a typo. It's the, uh, it's the fact the uh, last 40 years, about 1130 to one o'clock AM. Oh, 1130 PM to one o'clock in about, the morning. At about six different machines. And sometimes I get so skinny, I can tread water in a test tube, but I still love it. <laughs> I'm just shocked you were able to have three kids in the midst of that, but you must be one heck of a man. So this is so exciting. And so the reason for the show, there's a million reasons for it. Harvey's 87. I have never met a 20 year old with as much excitement and enthusiasm, stability, stamina, but he's just written another book and it's coming out on Amazon here pretty quick, but it's at a pre-order stage. So we, during the show, are going to bribe the crud out of you to make sure that you order the book right now. So we can't pass go. We can't collect $200. We have to do it right now, right? We do. And can I tell them about bribe number one? Bribe number one. So bribe number one, for all of you who are watching with us on Facebook right now, there's a button there if you look at your screen that says watch party. And what that's going to do is invite your buddies to come and watch this with you. And so if you hit that button and do a watch party and share this with your friends, comment watch party for us. We'll see that. And we're going to pick one of you and we're going to send you a book for free. That's a bunch of hogwash. <laughs> you guys do this. We'll give you a 10. We don't want how much is we're going to we're going to give away a bunch of things. We All just right. 10 to the start. That's 200 bucks. I can afford that. <laughs> 200 bucks. I'm bribing you. All right. So hit watch or whatever the heck watch you hit. Watch party. Okay. So Harvey, what about this new book? You've just written a new book. Well, you haven't hit your peak yet, and you have to know where the uh, title comes from. Uh, I spent six weeks, morning, noon, night, second, hours, days, weeks, with the publisher, couldn't come up with a title. One day I'm shaving, okay, and I said, that's it. I've been doing it for 25 years with a post-it note. You haven't hit your peak yet. And I said, that's it. And that's where the title came from. Uh, you I have had a yellow a, sticky on your phone. I mean, on note, your mirror for 25 a years. Post-it note for 25 years. And someone said the right path is near, yet men seek it afar off. <laughs> I'm calling people. I'm looking all over. I'm looking through libraries. And it's right in front of my face. How's that, how's that for you? So You go to Amazon right now. You have actually after the show or something. How can they go order the book? Well, they'll have split spring. Yeah. yeah. You want to do that, you guys? Because I'm telling you, you haven't hit your peak yet. That's the book you're going to buy. It's a pre order. And if you do that, we're going to throw all kinds of stuff in after that. But I'm going to tell you why I love Harvey so much because I am telling you, I am a contact mapper. You know that. I was a contact mapper before I the, co the term was even coined because I didn't want to steal the McKay 66. The McKay 66 completely changed my life many years ago when I was in the restaurant business, because I knew the more I knew about the customer, the more the customer was going to want to come back because they were being remembered. And the guy that brought that to the forefront was Harvey McKay. Talk about the McKay 66. Well, it, uh, it did change my life. I wouldn't be sitting here. It might sound uh, very self-serving, very bright though, show, but uh, it did sell, sell, swim with the sharks, and I printed the 66 inside. Uh, it sold 5 million copies. Uh, never would have sold 5 million in 80 countries and 52 different languages had that 66 not been in there. And it's very simple. People don't care how much you know about them once they realize how much you care about them. So here I am 
21 years old, graduate for college, got my nice degree right here, first graduate uh, from my family, kind of cocky, kind of confident, uh, quite frankly, <laughs> had chap lips from kissing the mirror too much. I, mean, I wanted to I start at the top and work up. I thought I knew it all. And so what they do, I started an envelope company, nationally ranked company called Quality Park Envelope Company. And I had 300 accounts six, about six months later and I'm having difficulty. And I taught myself, believe it or not, to be creative. Believe it or not, to be creative, any listener out there, all right? Any viewer can become creative almost overnight. And we'll get into that hopefully uh, at a later time. So I came up with three, a 66 question customer profile. I'm calling on 300 buyers. And I wanted to know every single thing about them. 66 questions. Now, 20 answers are better than 10, 30 are better than 20. So I wanted to know, you know, where they work last, where they were born and raised, what's their age, are they married, what turns them on, what are their hobbies, what are their vacations, what do they believe in, are they a Democrat, Republican, or an independent? On and on and on, the 66 question customer profile meant everything in the world to me. And that's what I've been doing, quite frankly, all of the time. In fact, if I just take another few seconds, going to Eric Worre's house, uh, he did, he was very nice, you know, sending me a, a, a private car. And I asked, how long is the ride? And he said, 24 minutes. Well, he also told me that he lived with Eric, you know, as his driver, security. <laughs> Guess what? I spent 24 minutes asking questions on the 66. So when I got to the house, I knew about all the things I wanted to talk about, learning it from him. Have to keep your antenna up all of the time. Boy, that is so cool. Yeah, that's the whole movie right there. That's unbelievable. Giginterviewer.com. I know, I know. That's what you do. We steal everything from Harvey McKay. We didn't even know it. <laughs> I think I might be his son. You've got four kids. <laughs> or your brother. Never mind. I didn't mean to hurt your age there. We're like the same age. Well, you, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't believe how much we know about our customers. The IRS wouldn't know how much we know about our customers. And I'm not talking about their taste in envelopes either. I'm talking about, you know, want to know every single thing again about that customer. So vitally important. Wow. And so I, I like, the, I didn't know the backstory of that being born really of struggling to start off with and realizing that that was the key to your success. And so talk about that journey of, of formulating the 66 and realizing that that was the key to your success. Surely, so, so we can uh, let the listener in. Can I just put it in reverse for a second or two and, and try to give you a, a specific example so everybody knows what we're talking about? No sure. problem? Yeah. Okay, let's say that I'm gonna go sell a customer and that customer means everything to me. And it doesn't matter who's listening, whether you're in the insurance business, banking, HR, manufacturing, this applies to every human being and there's only 7.4 billion uh, on the planet, all right? But he doesn't know, it could be she, in this case, it's, he doesn't know what's in my brain bank. He doesn't know the homework that I've done. He doesn't know the prepare to win, all right? But I need the business, I want the business. Now let's say his name is Tom Chenault. Let's just say his name is Tom Chenault. Well, let me just tell you if I can, read you a couple, just a couple facts about him. And again, the concept won't change, no matter what I'm selling. But everybody knows he's president of Mole, of course, and associates, co-founder, contact map, mapping. Now, his birthday and anniversary, same day, July 1st. <laughs> wow. He lives in Longmont, Colorado, born and raised in Littleton, Colorado. Tom graduated from Littleton High School. He went to Mesa State on a baseball scholarship. Tom's married to, luckily, Denise. She is also a professional network marketer. And just a few more things. They have three children. Adrian, never heard of him. Uh, can I tell him you're 35 years old, co-founder of Contact Map Mapping. He appears frequently on the show as he is this moment. Courtney, age 31. She lives in Denver, is a high-level sales rep for an internet company. Dominic, age 27, barista at a coffee shop in Longmont. Tom likes to go out in his boat, likes to spend time with his three grandchildren. 
help homeless people and recovering alcoholics. Tom's got 30 year, he's the 30 year recovered alcoholic. He still attends a 7 a.m. AA meeting every single day, which is incredible. He now drinks a ton of coffee. He follows the Denver Nuggets. And that should be good for a condolence or two. Boy, what a season they're having. I also follow uh, other sports teams, of course, as well. Well, just to wrap it up, Denise enjoys archery, travel, taking care of new puppy, helping the single moms find their way. Tom and Denise are moving into a new dream house on a lake that they've been working on for three long years. Tom's very bright, spontaneous, outgoing, has a fantastic sense of humor. Now, this is the short list because we don't have a lot of time here. I submit to every listener out there, every viewer, what's the probability I will sell Tom over a long period of time? And I almost, can't buy any more. Almost 100%. <laughs> what else do you have for sale? <laughs> almost 100%. If I don't know, okay, the answers to any of these questions, I'll read the desk, I'll read the wall, I'll talk to his assistant, I'll do all these things. And in those books will tell you how I got all that information. Definition the Leaning of, Tower of McKay. That's right. Unbelievable. Definition of a secret is when one person knows. So I'm not <laughs> gonna I'm not gonna share that secret. But it's in the books. All right. Yeah, it's in it's in what they're gonna buy, what they're gonna read. And uh, anyway. We'll come back to the book, I'm sure, okay? Look what you did with that, Jeff Beebe, for the listeners, especially on the radio. Adrian and I witnessed Jeff Beebe and his wife, Debbie. Uh, Harvey stood on the stage and just repeated Jeff's life story back to him. And it was magical. And the guy was literally sobbing because all any of us want in our life is to be remembered. And the king of teaching people to remember people and love people is Harvey McKay. And if you don't understand that, man, I am telling you, look at the success of this very connected man, and you're going to see why people follow in his footsteps, and we're begging you to do that. So let's take a little break. We're going to come back right after this. It is the Tom Sh It's the Network Marketing Leadership Show with Adrian and Tom Shinoff. We'll be right back. <laughs> And we're back. Hello. We did. How are you? That's good. All right, Debbie. Oh, you, got, you got a new name, Speedy Gonzalez. Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> we are so excited. So that was, yeah, that was so, a hurricane. That was, that was a break. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. that was going into the break. Now we got a hard break right now for a couple of minutes where we talk about contact mapping and all of our other show sponsors. So we'll get to the other show sponsors right now. That's over with. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I took a speed reading course in college, but I'll tell you, couldn't do it that fast. <laughs> a couple thousand words a minute. It can be yeah. done, though, if, you, if you're taught right. Yeah, man. Have you ever been more excited about a guy in your life? No, it's, it, it's just what I love about what Harvey has done and what he's taught so many people to do and, and really what it, you know, the, it's the foundation that we have built our little company on is that if you can learn enough about everybody that you're coming into contact with and have a place to be able to remember that so that that McKay 66 is always with you wherever you go so that you can call it up in a moment's notice when that person calls you on the phone out of the blue or whatever it is that the impact that you can have on every person you interact with is going to result in them wanting to do business with you. It's going to result in them wanting to introduce you to their friends because you make them look good. And the list goes on and on and on. And what Harvey shares in his books, and I, I cannot even tell you how excited I am for the new book to come out, is he, he gives you not only the how, but the why. And he just shows you how easy it is to do if you can just get your head out of your behind and look at what's hanging on the walls in the guy's office and pay attention to whatever's hanging from the door mirror in the Uber driver's car that they wanted you to notice because it says something about who they are and they want to be noticed about that little thing. Those things make a huge difference. Yeah, no doubt about it. Are we going to give away some of these things? Yeah. That's so, what the deal is? Yeah, do it. Okay, you guys. So if you bought the book, we're also going to send you a bumper sticker and these are all over my Jeep, aren't they? Yeah, my wife won't let me put them on the Tesla because she's 
listening to the show and I love her. <laughs> I almost said something snide, but I am telling you, I've got them everywhere. Even if I lifted up my shirt right now, you would be nauseated, but you would see I also have this tattooed on my chest because be good to people. That's what you want to be is a better human being, everybody. So if you bought the book, if you bought the book, you haven't hit your peak yet. Uncommon wisdom for unleashing your power. You have got to get, we're going to give you one of these things too. And yeah, this is a very valuable thing. This had to have cost me like, this. <laughs> and, and guess why? You know why I'm so excited about this? Tell me why. Because all we have to buy is the stamp because I did Harvey a very good deed earlier and he gave me free envelopes for life. That's right. <laughs> so this is so kind. So we defrayed that cost. I know. We defrayed the cost. <laughs> we are in love with you, Harvey. I mean, you don't have any idea. Well, you're, you're very, very kind. True uh, story. I really appreciate your words. So what, Har what Harvey teaches you is how to learn about people, how to use your network, how to be creative. And we're going to dive into all of that in, in much, much greater detail. But we, we built something on top of that called the coffee shop interview. And what the coffee shop interview does is it's a, a simple guide for how to have a conversation, just like you're in a coffee shop, whether you're in one or not with literally anybody that you come into contact with. And what we have done is shown you to get out of your own way, to get out of your own agenda, to get out of your head and to put yourself into the heart and into the priorities of the person that is sitting across the table from you. And if you can get curious and interested and find where their values are and where their pain is, you are going to have a map that's going to make it possible for you to do a huge amount of business with that person. And so that's something that we give away for free because we think it's so important to have people show up that different way. And it's just one of the things that we do with contact mapping. And so I wanna invite you to go check that out at contactmapping.com slash CSI for coffee shop interview. You're really gonna enjoy it. And as you read Harvey's books, you're gonna realize that we pretty much just blatantly stole it from Harvey. Anyway. <laughs> Everything, <laughs> even the tagline, humanize your address book. I, know. I didn't even know you stole that from him. It's uh, my secret's out. The poor guy. You know what I just figured out? What? After a few minutes? What? It's true, the old saying, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Amen to that. I'm telling you, end the story. Very, very humble young man. <laughs> okay, hang on. One second. We got to come. If I give him a sitting ovation. <laughs> there you go, perfect. All right. That's exciting. Okay, Tim, for two seconds. 1,001. And we're back. This is the Network Marketing Leadership Show with Tom and Adrian Chenault. And we are interviewing Harvey McKay. If you haven't read Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty, you're out of your mind. If you haven't read Swimming with the Sharks, swim, swim, swim with the sharks without being eaten alive. And the reason I did that was, the reason I had to look at the title was I keep saying swimming. And then I started thinking about saying swimming and swim and I completely screwed it up because I'm a terrible chalk show host. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's all right, good fun. You good. gotta buy these books, but, before, but while you're doing that, you can buy those books at the bookstore, but you have to go to Amazon and pre-order this book right now. What's it called? It is called, You Haven't Hit Your Peak Yet. And you got to go in pre-order right now. It's going to be awesome. Did, did, uh, may, may I take out uh, Dan self-serving? Well, yeah, that? let's yes. see that. Yeah. Uh, wow, Harvey. Go uh, a little tiny. That's amazing. Cover. And Hold this it down just a little bit lower, Harvey. I'd like to make another very important mm -hmm. point. And everything I say and do, I do my best thinking all the time. I want to give those listeners take-home value. So I'm thinking about, you know, not... Not, not some difficult thing. They have to memorize and work a lot, you know, open up the books all the time. Just take home value. I want every single reader out there, everyone that happens, okay, to buy this pre-order, to remember one thing. When you get the book, please, 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 don't read it. Study it, underline it, highlight it, post-it notes, rough it up. That's the way you read a self-help book. I mean, Dale Carnegie, my father gave it to me when I was very, very young, age 18, 17, as a recall. I've read it over 100 times. Yep. All right. Think and Grow Rich, same thing. These, these books are phenomenal. And I just say with my books, uh, self-help books, you, you shouldn't just put it down, put it in the library, in the attic. That's it. 
you underline it and every year you pull out the underlinings. Why do you do that? Because at age 25 uh, versus 35 and 35 versus 45, you've had a person's life equals the total sum of his or her experiences. You're a different person. You've, you've, you've been blackmailed, you've been double crossed, you've been fired, you've, you know, all these different things. These words don't apply necessarily when you're 25 or 30. So you go back and you read it every year. That's why you keep it around. Wow. And remember one other thing, one other thing, if I may, biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. Amen for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Put that, put that under your pillow, put it on the dashboard, all right? put it on a post-it note, put it on the mirror. I repeat, just because it's so powerful a belief, biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. True story. And, and at 87 years old, you still believe you haven't hit your peak yet, and you still believe that that's still the biggest room in the world, don't you? There is no question about it with, with all the vigor I have. Every morning I get up, I believe it because I started a new worldwide company uh, just last week. So, uh, uh, you know, and you know what happens when you catch up with the Joneses? I mean, everybody's working hard. But yep. when you catch up with the Joneses, they refinance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to keep going. You have to keep plugging. If you're, if you're just staying even, you're getting behind. You have to reinvent yourself. You have to keep up on all those books. You have to surround yourself with winners. Myriad of things you can do to increase the probability you will improve. So you're also a nationally syndicated, you, you write a column all the time for a long time. Well, my father, Jack McKay, uh, he was a national syndicated columnist, but also headed the Associated Press in St. Paul and Minneapolis for 35 years. And luckily, the last, oh, approximately 26 years, I've written a column once a week. Uh, circulation, 10 million newspapers, goes to 100 cities. And uh, with the distribution, as I say, way, way up there. Uh, I don't know how many people read the business page, but it's not really business. It's life lessons. And I've been doing that again once a week. Uh, for the last 25 years. Wow. So this being retired is way, way overrated. Wait, what, 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 what word did you use again? Retired I, is way. Retired. Don't Just do it. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. So <laughs> I don't have my phone with me. I'll, I'll Google it when we're through with the program. Don't do it, everybody. It's just a license to die. We're going to take a break. We are on the Genesis Communication Network Thank you, Ted Anderson, for putting this show all over the world. Harvey appreciates it, but the world appreciates it more. This guy is still a treasure for the United States, and I'm just honored that you chose to put us on the air with Harvey McKay, and I'll be forever in gratitude to you, sir. So we're coming back right after this on the Network Marketing Leadership Show. Boom, we're back. I hit, I nailed the break. That was perfect. Unbelievable. You were, right? you were a very good host. I know it. First rodeo. <laughs> so I, uh, I have to interject though. I can't believe I'm sitting right here. What's right next to me? A sign. What does it say? Grateful. That's everywhere what we I, like. Everywhere I go for the last, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. How you doing? How you been? New conventions, new envelope conventions, everything. How you doing? Reunions. I'm grateful. Amen. That's it. That's exactly right. That's the most important thing. End of story. So one of the things I love from Swim with the Sharks is the not only the story of the 66 themselves, but there's a little anecdote in there that you would sort of call the salespeople into the office and you'd essentially be quizzing them on how solid those answers really were, whether they really knew what this was, what the, you know, what their person was about. So talk about how important it is not only to document those things, but also that that's a living document, right? Just like you said that every, you know, you're different at 25 and 35 and 45, that you have to continue interviewing your customer to understand how they're changing over time so that you can keep that relationship strong. So talk a little bit about that. Surely. Well, I thought what you're going to refer to was uh, I have a lot of people in uh, where I have a problem. Of course, I get out of my chair. I sit in his or her chair and they sit in my chair. Oh. Um, and I say, tell me, now what do you have to say? So it's just, uh, it, it's a little movement that, that continues to uh, help. Everything is open. 
everything is trust, as you well know. And so when you're reprimanding someone, you've got some problems, whatever it is, at the end, at the end, they have to be able to trust you. Example, let me just give you a quick little example. If, uh, let's say I've got headaches, migraines, and let's say I got chest pains. If I go to a doctor, if I tell the doctor about my headaches and I don't tell him or her about the chest pains, guess what? He can't help me. So I get every single person that comes in and anyone can go over another boss's head. And if that boss reprimands again him or her, guess what? Fired on the spot. So my door is open to everybody. Communication is absolutely necessary without question. Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett said just oh, two weeks ago, he said that if you want to improve your life, 50% improve your communication skills and then become a public speaker as for training, which is very wow. interesting. So, so keep the dialogue going with all those people. There's all kinds of, uh, it's not chicanery. I mean, it's not trickiness. It's just right from the heart. That's all, even though I play games with them uh, a little bit. <laughs> you do. You have been known to play a game or two. <laughs> Fraser Brooks, I don't remember. I, you remember that whack job from England named Fraser Brooks that was all excited? And he just shared this show all over Europe, all over the world. He's got two different groups. One's called the Ninja Networker. The other one is just Ninja Networker VIP. Yeah. And that maniac, you guys got me so excited. Look what my phone just did. I'm so pumped up that it says my phone just says it looks like you've taking a hard fall. We're calling 911. So that's that's when you know you're excited by somebody. I'm so pumped that when Fraser did that, I hit my arm down and don't do that. Tell, tell Fraser I'm also sending him a lifetime supply of free envelopes. Okay, Fraser, that's you did awesome. it. Plus, we're gonna send him a be good for people. That's good. Except be good to people. Yeah, whatever it says. I'm a terrible. Okay, keep you're going. all hard. You don't have to know how to read if you've got a big enough heart. You're in. You're in your commercial. We are in our commercial. So I'm. Uh, I'm feeling left out. Do I get one? Yeah. You. Yeah. We. Yeah. This is called the Harvey McKay Show. So everybody, go to harveymckay.com. M A C K A Y dot com. And if you bought the book, send an email. Is it's to harvey at mckay dot com. Harvey at McKay. McKay. Yeah, I blew that. Harvey at McKay, Pamela. Harvey at McKay.com. If you bought the book, I want you to go in there and say, I bought the book. That's all. What? Right? That's all. Then they get get my goodie. Yeah, we don't need, you don't need a receipt. You don't need anything. We're doing it on the honor system. He's going to send you another free prize that's going to blow your mind because that's just the way we are, right? Absolutely. Can All I right. describe that? Can I describe that now? And incidentally, no, we're going to do it back in the show in a second. We're going to do it on the big radio. I do that. This was for all the commercial people. So stick around for one second. And we're back. It's the network marketing radio show, network marketing leadership show with Tom Chanel. We are with Adrian Chanel, my little boy who renamed the show, made it a tongue twister for his dad. That's right. And uh, we are very, very excited about that because now we are a podcast. We're still on the great GCN network. We are everywhere because of you and your smart partner from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Rick Manelius and Jason, our buddy, we got, and Marianne Niehaus, of course. We got a great team. Yep, take it away, baby. <laughs> Ask Harvey some questions. So I've, uh, uh, coming back, just, they always misspell Matt K so we can cover that later, okay? Yes. Yeah, we gotta make sure we get that right. M-A-C-K-A-Y. That's right. Okay. M-A-C-K-E-Y is the way you spell it. <laughs> That's perfect. M-A-C-K-A-Y. Practice that a couple of times, then you're going to hit dot .com, and you're going to be in business. So get that locked okay. in your head. Thank you. Little, little things mean a lot. That's not true. Little things mean everything. Amen. Yeah. Especially when it comes to email spellings. <laughs> yes. So Harvey, you hit on this a little bit earlier and, and I, I really have witnessed this and have seen it even more clearly because I've gotten to watch you in action a couple of times now. Talk about how you have leveraged creativity to great benefit in your career and, how, and what that means to you. Well, I said earlier that I've taught myself to be creative 
every listener, viewer out there, audience, can become way more creative than they ever believed in their life. Yeah, they have to just trust me on that. And here's the big thing, all the studies, every study known to mankind, there's zip, none, no correlation between creativity and IQ. So some of the ways how you can become creative, of course, I, I like to be that every single day. I learned just a little bit of creativity, but it goes into networking, goes into 66. These all play towards the same center, if you know what I mean. I think it's creative that every single day of my life for the last uh, 59 years of business, all right, I happen to pick up the phone or email, but most time phone all over the world if you have a birthday. Again, I say little things mean a lot. I repeat that all the time. They mean everything. So every single day, all of these years, I'll be calling one, two, three people, just taking a couple minutes out and letting them know that I care. And I think that's a very creative idea that I, that I came up with. And when you look at top people, uh, when you're doing the hiring process, maybe we can talk about hiring too for a moment, which happens to be my, maybe my favorite subject. Oh, they're all, every one of them is my favorite subject. But, but it's really, truly important, again, to how do you make that person, you know, feel like a human being. You want to go deep with every person you meet, assuming you want to go deep. Again, my father gets a hold of me, age 18. Every person you meet, and we'll get into that, that's networking. Or every person you meet, assuming you want to keep in touch, Okay, that's the name of the game. Then you want to help them. And we can talk more about that in depth at a later time. Wow, that is so cool. And what are some of your favorite, because that, that creative ways to keep in touch, what are some of your favorite tricks besides sure. ways Thank to keep Thank you. In touch? Well, number, number one, I call it spin to win. Spin to win, doing it all my life, every single Sunday. As soon as I, basically when I got out of school, and I developed the 66 and all this and the networking. Spin to win. I've got uh, oh, approximately 18,000 names. Uh, you know, used to be Rolodex, of course. Yeah. Today it's the computer and you put it in your phone, as you know. And that reaches out to a lot of people. So what would I do? I would just spin it, call over the world, take out Sunday night. How are you doing? Thinking about you. Got something on the back of the card. Oh, how is Mary? How was, you know, did, you, did your son graduate? Did he make the little league or she make the little league? All of those different things. Now, talk about creativity. Red Buttons, our audience hasn't heard of him. He's a hundred years ago, but Red <laughs> Buttons is one of the greatest. You heard of him, of course, Tom. Nobody else has, just the two of them. <laughs> just us. <laughs> You're not within 30 years of my 80s. <laughs> anyway, uh, Red Buttons, brilliant creativity hang on your hat, one of the best comedians in, in the history of the United States. I mean, he traveled all over the world. What did he do? Every time he went to a different city, he met people, of course, and then he kept, had dinner with them, whatever, kept his antenna up, wanted to build his Rolodex and all that. So he comes back to his uh, you know, apartment or hotel, whatever. And what does he do? Again, he sits down and makes out their Christmas card right on the spot. So smart. So therefore, he's got the names right in his memory system. He's got the data, and he makes out the Christmas card and lets them all flow, of course, in December. Those people think he's a genius. Wow. Absolutely a genius. And then let me tell you another thing, which no one can talk me out of. I can be talked out of almost everything, but there's a few things. No one can talk me out of this. And that's as follows. President Bush, Father Bush, President Clinton, never, never, never would have been president of the United States unless they were sending short, creative notes. I mean, I send thousands of them. I'm looking at the business pages. I'm looking at the entire newspaper. I'm, I'm trying to find every single possible way for a reason, for a reason, okay, to absolutely send somebody a short note. Congratulations, I see your daughter did this. Congratulations, you just named CEO goes on and on and on. They sent, believe it or not, just tens of thousands of notes. And then those people, you know, just just passed it on to other people. 
I met uh, I met uh, uh, President Bush before he was President Bush. Uh, I'm sorry, it was after. That's right, it was after in the Minneapolis airport. And he's walking with a friend of mine. Introduced me to him. Two minutes, three minutes of chatting. Twenty four hours later, I get a note from him. No way. <laughs> I get a note for twenty four. He's been doing that his entire life. Clinton, short notes yield fantastic results. Those are some of the key the I get a book in the mail yesterday to Mr. Harvey McKay. I'm a huge fan of yours. Hope you love my book. Look forward to our paths crossing. So this guy knew I was going to be with you. And he wrote a handwritten note that I'm going to send down to you because the smart people do that. And I am telling everybody, be more like Harvey. The Rolodex is passe. I mean, those things are hard to keep track of, very hard to travel with, but you can put, you can document your information. You can follow up your information like it's a magic trick. And if you want to be Harvey McKay, or if you want to even be Tom Chenault, I am telling you, that's the only secret to success I've got. And I am telling you, he hit the nail on the head two minutes ago when he said creativity trumps intelligence. You've got to remember that. I am completely convinced of that because I am not a bright guy, but I am one heck of a contact mapper. I'm a documenter and I'm a follow-upper at a level you wouldn't believe. It worked for me. It worked for him. Why would it not work for you? That's what I want to know. Tell them about the book to buy first. Go. Because a lot of people just joined the show. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and I want to dive in. Let's let's use this as the chance to talk about the bonuses and everything because there's so many cool things that Harvey's going to give away, let alone what we're going to give away. But the new book is called You Haven't Hit Your Peak Yet. You need to go to Amazon and just type in Harvey McKay, M-A-C-K-A-Y. You haven't hit your peak yet. And you'll find it there. You're going to pre-order the book. And then you're going to send, and you need to do this by the end of this calendar year. So by December 31st at midnight, you need to do this in order to get these great prizes. Or by the end of this show, whichever comes first. Or by the end of this show. <laughs> but Harvey at McKay.com, M-A-C-K-A-Y.com. You send him a note and on your honors, you just say, I bought the book. And Harvey, tell them everything that you're going to do, which I have already received back and I'm so excited about. M-A-C small K. Hey, well, okay. okay, no yeah. problem. All right, so tell them what they're gonna get when they when they pre-order the book. Well, this is what I'm really proud about. When I talk about the 66 changed my life, well, basically I was invited uh, to Harvard to direct my speech, of course, about oh, 90 minutes uh, to the Harvard Business School. The Harvard Business Review was in the audience and they asked me to rewrite most of my remarks to the Harvard MBAers. And that I did do. And I put it into a little book, okay, electronically that every single buyer can get by just writing Harvey at McKay.com. I bought the book. Nothing more. No slips, no proof. You're on your you're on your honor. And I trust your your audience, obviously, of course. So here's here's what it is. It's just 100 pages. That's all. But on page 55 to 75 is humanize your selling strategy. This is 20 pages on the 66. Can't be purchased anywhere else. I don't think I don't think it's possible. It's only in this. And of course, this is a synopsis of Dig Your Well Before You're Thirsty, which is in 200 universities. So these are the Cliffs notes, okay, regarding everything you want to know about networking. Harvey McKay, network builder, very, very proud of this. And this really did uh, change my life, the 66. It's here to be had. Don't read it once. Read it over and over again and use it. Repeat again, biggest room in the world, room for improvement. Electronically, they will get this book. And of course, obviously there's a surprise or two that I'm not even gonna tell them, okay, once they do this. We are powdering you with perks. This is called the Harvey McKay Powder You With Perks radio show. So whatever you do, get powdered with perks by Harvey McKay. How cool is that? It's good and be cool. Well said. You know, you know what? what? Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Do you mind, Tom? 
I'm going to try. Yeah, after the show, give me who your ghostwriter is. I love your lines. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wish. It's called, yeah, Chad Williams is his name. So, yeah, so much. I love our life, man. That's what's so cool. It's rare you get to be on the same show as somebody you have looked up to literally since your career started. Because I tried all the other tricks in the book. I tried to be the smartest. I tried to be the this. I tried to be the that. But once I was my best Tom Chenault, and I remembered the person across the table, and I made their agenda my agenda, and Harvey said something a minute ago that was brilliant. He said that people have to trust you. They have to feel loved, and they have to be feel like they belong. And if you make people feel those three things, they are in your camp forever. So please do that, everybody. It is the secret to his success. Would you agree? Completely agree. And, so, and it's available to anybody, right? Yeah. You know, it's not about your IQ. It's not about your education. It's not about any of those things. It's available to every single person. And going to school, again, if I can just piggyback uh, on, on your idea right there for a moment, uh, Adrian, it's people, you know, it's, it's, this, it's always this time of year. People are looking at colleges all of the time, as you well know. And we've got a, a beautiful advanced education, obviously, program everywhere. You know, we've got great schools. We've got terrific schools, not top 10, not top 20, all over. Remember this, the school does not make the student. The student makes the school. Doesn't Amen. matter where you go. That's the important point here. Moral of the story, doesn't matter where you go to college, as long as you're going to one respected college, you know, with a history, doesn't matter. That's very important to remember. Very good. Okay, let's take a break. This is the final segment. We're coming back right after this with the great Harvey McKay on the Genesis Communication Network and the Network Marketing Leader Show, Ship Show with Tom Chanel. We'll be right back. I had to tell you about my philosophy. And we're back. Yeah, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> I need to go to Annunciation School. That's we're gonna we'll get this. We're gonna get it mastered sooner or later. <laughs> People have watch parties everywhere going on. You are ripping it, Adrian. That was a good idea on the watch parties. We're in the commercial now, Harvey. You can cuss. Oh, <laughs> can I cuss right now for a second? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let them have it. Yeah, so funny. Yeah, I love this show because uh, you get to do whatever you want, man, and it's so fun. Yeah. And no one, no one's title. listening. Come on, impossible. You are my man, man. No, <laughs> no FCC violations on this one. They, I'd you, love, I'd love to chat about my philosophy in life, which is very short. Don't let's hear it. Time. Do it right now. No, really? Okay, I will. Very, very short, and that is as follows. When I was 18 years old, my father taught me the following: entering college, every person you meet, the rest of your life, again assuming you want to keep in touch with him or her. Hi, my name's Harvey. Hello, my name's Tom. My name's Adrian. Right to your brain bank, you say to yourself, what can I do for Tom? What can I do for Adrian? How can I improve their life? How can I add value to their life? Assuming you want to keep in touch with them a long time. And then you eventually go deep. Now, a lot of people know that philosophy but here's where 99% of the people don't know the rest of the story. Remember Paul Harvey from a hundred years ago? The rest of the story, Adrian's never heard of him. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, rest of the story is as follows. Expect nothing in return. And if you can live your life like that, so I just say to every person out there, all right, just try it, three months. Everybody you meet. How, what, can I, what can I do for them? How can I enrich their life? How can I add value? Just try it for three months and you'll find out that you might have a life lesson there you may stick with. It's a true story. Your Rolodex is your most valuable asset. People don't understand that. And what I love about contactmapping.com is it basically took your Rolodex off your desk into your phone so it's with you wherever you go. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And that's invaluable, isn't it, Harry? <laughs> Pale ink is better than the most retentive memory. Oh, <laughs> wow. All right. Is awesome. We have just stolen another line. <laughs> so so in, in other words, again, when you've got all this in the palm of your hand and you're anywhere in the country, 
and you're meeting somewhere, you have dinner and you see spot over, you know, net, back to networking and spot someone over there, boom, call them up. Hey, you remember their kids' names, whatever you want, and you use it and you show them you care. I mean, it's a blitzkrieg. It's, it's phenomenal. I was at a coffee oh, shop God. this morning and this Good guy God. told me about two months ago that he went to Florida State University between 1976 and 1981. And I was sitting there, I go, this guy went to Florida State in, in 76. He, the guy about had a heart attack. He could not believe it. He thought I was talking to him. And it, oh, I, I have to talk about, Frazier Brooks was right there when I Harvey McCade, Harvey McKay. Because <laughs> Adrian told me what your golf handicap was and I brought it up to you and you about swallowed your cigar. Do you remember that? I certainly do remember that. Hardly before I met you. I mean, just just a little while after I met you. Yeah. I did that for a long time. No, I I uh, I Googled uh, superstar, and your picture came up. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is so cute. I, I, I sincerely mean it. I mean, right. you did you did blow me away, and I figured, boy, is he a student? He's read All everything. Right, read. I am a student of Harvey McKay. And Trump me and took it to the next level probably three levels up, which I'm thrilled about. Yep. Wonderful. Right. We're coming back. All right. It's the Tom Chenault Show and the Network Marketing Leadership Show with Adrian Chenault. And how are you doing, buddy? I'm so happy. Have you ever had a better show in our life? No, this is awesome. And I, we, we let's bring it home. Yeah, we, we are going to, we're, we're so in love with Harvey McKay because he has exemplified everything I have ever stood for. And I am going to tell all of you, that this is like the most serious show really we've ever done because this guy, his philosophy gave me my life. Here I am a broken down. He told you 31 year sober guy and just a train wreck looking for a place to happen. Yet I still had my database. And even though I was flat on my back with a dollar to my name, I was able to come back because of the people I'd met along the way that I never forgot. And ultimately they never forgot me. And that's each and every one of you. You can do it. You can become a Harvey McKay in your own right, but you've got to buy the book and tell them what it is one more time. Yep. It's called You Haven't Hit Your Peak Yet, and you can go grab it on Amazon.com. You just search for Harvey McKay, M-A-C-K-A-Y, little K, and you will find it. That's awesome. So Harvey, we're getting out of here. We are in love with you. Most I got one more question. Can I, what ask about, I want to ask him. I want to ask the quitting question. Okay. What do you want to ask? That's all right. Go. No, go. <laughs> uh, so what, what I've learned from you over and over again is, is just how important it is to be able to tap into your network when you're facing a huge problem. And talk a little bit about the story of the Minnesota Twins and how people and connections are what allowed you to do something that would have seemed totally impossible. Well, it's a 15-minute story in the 60 seconds, so I... I've never tried to do that before. You got seven the, minutes. You're good. Go. Minnesota uh, Twins, which I love, of course. All right. We built them a new stadium. And there was small print under the small print was that if Calvin Griffith was his name, the owner, if he doesn't attract so many fans, okay, like two million, whatever, then he has the right to move. And so it looked like nobody knew about that clause. So all of a sudden, I'm president of the Minneapolis Chamber of Commerce. We see we've got a big time problem. So I muscled my uh, network, of course, Pillsbury, General Mills, 3M, Honeywell. We've got 22 at the time, Fortune 500 companies in the Twin Cities. And I rolled around, I raised $6 million. I walked up with NBC, CBS, ABC in those days. And I said, may I please have 15,000 tickets to the night's game? That's all that there was left. And I kept going every single night buying those tickets up to make sure that he could not move. And he did not move. Of course, he couldn't. And we still have the Minnesota Twins. But uh, thank you. And I hope I covered That's that. That's the most amazing story. Can, can I, uh, do we have 60 seconds for my sure. favorite story? Yeah, yes. I, I mean, my favorite, all-time favorite. Every, I read it every week. Okay? okay. It would take 60 seconds. Are we okay? Yeah. Sure. All I'm right. Fine. Well, when things aren't going well, you know, you know, winners never quit and quitters never win. And, and all that. This is something that's so very important. And I've got it again, okay, at work. Just swivel around, there it is at work. Let me read it to you. Anytime you feel like quitting throughout your career, perhaps you remember this story, one of our people. 
He failed in business in 31, ran as a state legislator, lost in 32, tried business again in 33, failed again. Sweetheart died in 35. He had a nervous breakdown in 36. He was defeated for Congress in 43, defeated again for Congress in 48, defeated when he ran for the Senate in 55, and defeated for the vice presidency of the United States in 56. He ran for the Senate again in 58, and he lost again. This man never quit. In 1860, this man, Abraham Lincoln, was elected president of the United States. So you see, if you want to triple your success ratio, you might want to triple your failure rate. I'll leave you with my thought. Oh, you guys. If you don't believe that story, if you don't look at Harvey and say, you can do it, you're crazy. Go buy the book right now as a favor to me, as a favor to Harvey, as a favor to the world. What is it one more time? Because we're getting out of here. Yeah, go, go on amazon.com. You haven't hit your peak yet by Harvey McKay, M-A-C-K-A-Y. And you make sure you send him an email at Harvey at McKay, M-A-C-K-A-Y.com and let him know you did it. You'll get that phenomenal bonus of his speech that he gave at Harvard. And this is a guy to study for life. This is a guy who has been there, done that, and continues to do so at age 87. We are really honored to have you here today. So thank you so much. And I'm just sitting here trying to figure out how he knew all that stuff about me. And I think it was that little spy, Denise Chanel, <laughs> that told him, didn't it? That was her. Because there were a couple of things about me that no one knows, like my real passion that you mentioned. And it about your comes. other one, friend? Huh? <laughs> no question. <laughs> Unbelievable. Harvey, we love you. Thank well, you for coming on. And uh, you have an unbelievable book ahead of you. The world needs more of you. So we're dying to promote your next book in a year. But let's get this one sold first. We love you. Thanks for coming uh, on the I, show. I love we'll you. I love time. you guys more. Okay. And I'm looking forward to a very long, okay, relationship. You got it, baby. We'll see you later. Thanks a million. Bye-bye. Packmapping.com, everybody. We did it. We're clear. Harvey, you did it. That was awesome. Thank you so much. What oh, a show. my gosh. Thank you, Harvey. That's pretty funny. I sent you 18 questions and we hit three of them. <laughs> I know it. I saw it. I had it like that. Well, and I and I knew after I saw the show, the one hour show, okay, uh, that you did last week, Perkis or whatever his yeah, name is. Yeah, after yeah. I saw that, I said to myself, well, these guys are so sharp. We'll get a lot of feedback, get a lot of questions. So I said, I'll, you know, I'll roll them down to eight questions, which I sent the eight. <laughs> we got three of them in. <laughs> On, on Facebook alone, there's over 150 comments right now. People are watching you like crazy. The world is in love with you, sir. And make no mistake, we're, uh, what I didn't say on the air because I wanted to make sure that it, was, it wasn't timestamped. We're going to show this show again next week. And just we're going to pour it. Eric Worre was supposed to be on along with Jack Canfield. And uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but we're gonna kick whoever, I don't even know who our uh, guest next week I is. Get a chance, I get a chance to send it to my whole network uh, to take a peek at it, right? Oh, man. It's we, Harvey McKay. That's who we have on next week. Harvey right. McKay next week? Yeah. Marianne? Yeah. <laughs> and how do you like Marianne, Harvey? Do you think she's an OK human being? Well, I gave you the bad news. Uh, of course, Adrian didn't hear it. You ready, Adrian? Let's hear it. I hired Marianne a couple hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, careful. Come on over here. I want you to meet somebody I, here also. In, in this one guy's thing, name is Chad Williams. In, in this one guy, time, this yeah. guy has been sober 20 years. They, he got pulled out of a burning truck. He decided to turn his life around. He was living down in San Antonio. He heard us on the radio and a guy named Sean Murphy said, you need to move to Colorado and hang with Tom and Adrian. He's done that straightened out his life. He's going back to face the music in Indiana after the beginning of the year. I love this man with all of my heart. And he took a day off work to come and listen to your show, Harvey, because you had such an impact on all of us. Well, That's what it's all they, about. They, they threw the die away when they made him. To yeah, his amen to that. <laughs> and he had, he had a teacher in second grade tell him he was dumb and he <laughs> believed her. <laughs> and it just made any, and it was, it, it really affected his life badly. He has finally unwound that tape. He's just a success looking for a place to happen. 
And I love you, Chad. So love you too. Harvey McKay and Chad. These two last, right here. Last words. Good. I'm all in. Okay. Difference between 100% all in and 99% all in is 100%. Amen, yeah. baby. I'm all in. We love you, Harvey. Thanks a million. Have a very happy holiday. Merry love Christmas. You, Harvey. Appreciate it. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. That was a great show. Merry Christmas. Perfect. Oh. <sighs>